Hi folks, welcome to my presentation. The topic we are going to talk about today is best practice on Windows workload management in Kubernetes. We will share some experience related to Windows clusters in production environments. There are two speakers, including Benjamin Wang, is me, and Wen Li Wei. We are both coming from VMware. I mainly focus on Kubernetes and CSI related work. And when he is focused on Kubernetes Windows related technologies. When he is busy with some customer issues recently, so I will deliver this presentation myself alone. There are three items on the agenda. Firstly, is the background, and is mainly about the issues from our customers' product environments. We summarized some experience and lessons based on the issues. That's exactly what we are going to share today. It includes some operation tips for cluster lifecycle management and how to integrate with the group management service account. First, let's talk about the background. We received some issues from our customers in their product environment. For example, the C drive may run out of space when there are a lot of workloads or PV couldn't be attached to a new workload during rolling update. Sometimes we see some often text after moving a cluster. It's also challenging to manage credential on Windows platform. And there are some other issues as well. We will share the experience on how we resolved all these issues or concerns. The first tip is about the informa disk. Each container on Windows platform had its own scratch space. And actually a virtual informa disk is created for each container is 20 gigabyte by default. You know, usually on the root directory for a container runtime locates on the C drive by default. So if there are a lot of pods running on a Windows node, then the C drive may run out of space. You know, the system files are in the C drive as well. So the C drive is important for the Windows OS to operate correctly. So we should avoid running out of space on the C drive. The best practice is to configure the container runtime's root directory on a larger drive, such as E drive. In this example, the C slash war slash recap slash data is a link to another larger drive, such as E drive. The target drive may change but the soft link will always be the same path. Sometimes users may need to update the cluster. It's important to make sure that there is zero downtime on the work node. So we should perform a rolling update, which means to update the work node one by one. But if there are a lot of work nodes, it may take a long time to finish the rolling update. For example, if there, for example, if there are 50 work nodes in the clusters and it needs about three minutes to update each work node, then you need about 150 minutes in total to finish updating the cluster, which is two and a half hours. It's a long time. The solution is to let the user to set the maximum number of work VMs, which can be created or updated concurrently. We call it as Max in flight. In this example, we set the max in flight as five. So you need about 30 minutes to finish updating the cluster. Obviously, it saves a lot of time. In the meanwhile, it can also meet the zero downtime requirement. The next uh, operative is also for the rolling updates. When updating cluster, we need to trim the Windows work node one by one. We assume the max in flood is one for simplicity here. The rough workflow is de described in the diagram on the right side. The first step is to come down the work node so as to mark the node as unschedulable. Any new pod will not be scheduled on this work node anymore. Secondly, to trim the work node so as to evict all the existing pods which are running on this Windows work node. Please note that we need to ignore the demon set because the demon set cannot be trimmed. Usually after the step two, all the pods on the nodes 
should have already been evicted, but somehow some part may still running for whatever reasons. In this situation, we need to falsely kill such part. And it's exactly the third step to. Next step is to watch disk until all block volumes are detached from this work node. It's important, you know, if a block volume is not detached from this work node, then it cannot be attached to another work node. So the part assuming the PV is not healthy. Please note that we need to ignore the informed disks created for the container because we should only care about the block volume for the PV. The last step is to remove the node from the cluster. Okay, the next tip is about uh, deleting clusters. Sometimes users may want to delete a cluster. We need to remove the PVGs beforehand. Otherwise, it may result in orphan disks. If the reclaim policy is retained, we need to remove the PVGs as well. Previously, we received some cases related to this one. You know, some uh, users uh, complain that they still pay for the disks, which are not used anymore. So actually, all is, uh, they are often disks. The next topic is about the GMSA. GMSA means group manager service accounts. It could automatically manage your password and simplify service principle. It is widely used in Windows application from Kubernetes 1.3. Uh, 16 Docker runtime support GMSA for Windows working out and is stable in Kubernetes 1.18. In Kubernetes, GMSA credential spec are configured as customer resource. Uh, these are background information for the GMSA and you are recommended to read the official guide on Microsoft to get more, more information on the GMSA. There are some preparation in order to use the GMSA. Firstly, you need to set up a Windows Active Directory server and create the KDE root key using the domain admin account. You also need to create a security group and get the GMSA credential associated with the security groups. Okay, this page is the high level diagram, high level workflows. The left diagram shows how the GMSA work for the Windows cluster. Firstly, each Windows work node needs to be added to, to the Active Directory. And then it also needs to be added to the security group. And a uh, credential spec needs to be created on each Windows work node. The left diagram shows how to integrate the GMSA into Kubernetes. Firstly, install the credential spec CRD. And secondly, install the webhook, including the mutating webhook and the validating webhook. The mutation webhook is used to expand reference to the GMSA into the full credential spec in JSON format within the pod spec. The validating webhook is used to ensure all reference to the GMSA are authorized to be used by the pod service account. Next, we just need to follow the standard RBAC pattern create the cluster row and configure the permission on the GMSA credential spec. And then create a service account and assign the row to the service account using a cluster row bounding. Lastly, we need to set the service account in the pod and set the credential spec name in the security context to the GMSA credential, ref, uh, credential spec reference in pod spec. Afterwards, all pod running on this Windows work node could join the AD and the security group automatically. This page is just the detailed description on the diagrams on previous page. So I'm not going to repeat it. That's all for today's sharing. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.